We're back on the Common Sense Club. It's Scott Hillen, your humble host at your service, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and our friend Andrew Breitbart, new media mogul, publisher of the news portals Breitbart.com, Breitbart TV, and author of Righteous Indignation, Excuse Me While I Save the World, author of that great line, The Democratic Media Complex is Hard at Work. Our friend Andrew Breitbart joining us on the way to Orlando, Florida. How are you, Andrew? I'm doing great. Going to the uh, presidential debate right now, and uh, en route, we just dropped a pretty explosive uh, story over big government and big journalism. Uh, we I've, got uh, in our, I've already read it. it. I've, I've yeah. read the story. Right? You, you were exposing. Uh, I mean, this 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 Joe McGinnis, this so-called author, who's just a you know a, a you know basically a National Enquirer material, has written this. Uh, book the rogue searching for the real sarah palin and even the democratic media complex is against him but the bad just got worse here this week tell us about your story well you know this is a uh, random house the same publishing operation that put the james fry uh book out there a million little pieces so this will be very interesting to see what happens with the story uh we got an email that joe mcginnis wrote the day after he after after he put in his manuscript with Random House, he's sending out a desperate email to the lowest of the lowest bloggers up in Alaska, the ones who were pushing that uh, Sarah Palin was not the mother of Trigg, saying that many of the allegations that he would put in the book uh, with without proper sourcing. Uh, that that they were simply tawdry allegations that he wished to be true and that he had no confirmation of it. This is after he gave his manuscript uh, to Random House to look at. And so it shows that in overtime, he's he's desperately trying to find some confirmation uh, for the garbage that he put in his book. Yeah, so by the way, he's ripping his own book here, basically. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and, and you see the desperation because he's going to bloggers. <laughs> he's going to lowly bloggers. He's going to bloggers who's who, without, uh, you know, one of these bloggers, the one who's emailed Jesse Griffin, no longer writes his blog because he was fired from his kindergarten uh, class that he taught because of the stuff that he was writing on his blog. I mean, these people have been uh, absolutely uh, debunked and defamed, and he's desperately, as the professional author who moved next door to Sarah Palin, to try and get to the bottom of, of what she was doing up there, uh, and, and he's relying upon uh, those people who have already provided the dirt, but just unsubstantiated dirt on, on little-known, obscure and uh, and completely <laughs> inappropriate blogs. So, what should Crown and Random House do with this uh, with this email with this revelation? Now, do you believe? I would think uh, that they're going to have to have a, a, to figure out their million little pieces uh, resolution to this. I mean, I'm I'm not in that industry, but I've gone through uh, two books, two vetting processes, and. Uh, my the lawyers that have vetted my stuff have made you know they've they've gone down to single words that I've had to change, and what you see is that Random House and both uh, both Random House and McGinnis are uh, you know flying fast and loose with the truth here, and that they're getting into you know uh, globe tabloid territory here, and so people are now seeing how the sausage is made, and I think that Random House is too big of uh, an entity. Uh, to be able to withstand this type of thing, you know, just yesterday we were able to show that this uh, that this man, uh, Joe McGinnis, who lived next door to Sarah Palin, uh, w- was charged with a hit and run. He in a local Wasilla parking lot, he hit uh, a lady's car, didn't report it. Uh, somebody saw it, reported it to the police. The police found him at his house. Uh, after he reported his car stolen, the, the, yeah, the, the, the car wasn't stolen. Uh, it was towed away because uh, they called the police and the police towed it away. Somehow he found himself back at his house where the police came and uh, said, you know, he tried to act like his car had been stolen. It hadn't been stolen. 
uh, he had gotten to a hit and run. So this guy is utterly unethical. This isn't the first time that he's found himself in this type of trouble. His most famous book, Fatal Vision, he had to pay the convicted murderer, Jeffrey McDonald, $325,000 in a lawsuit. And to make matters worse, just to show you how desperate this man was and how unethical he and uh, Random House were, there was a competitor's book by a former Palin staffer by the name of Frank Bailey. That book was being shopped to the major publishers. When it got to Random House, his publisher uh, sent it to, to Joe McGinnis, the manuscript of his uh, competition of his competitor's book, and he divulged it to the press and destroyed that manuscript and that book's commercial viability, a book that the author spent two years working on. So Joe McGinnis is one of the most unethical guys out there. And to top that off, in order to research the book, he intimidatingly moved next door to Sarah Palin. Yeah. This has been two years in the making that we've seen the harsh making of the Sarah Palin book. It comes out in the New York Times rejects it. The, the uh, Comedy Central rejects it. The liberal media rejects a book meant to attack Sarah Palin. Uh, you tell me what Random House should do with this piece of garbage. Uh, by the way, um, it is yet another sad chapter in this, uh, like the book, the movie you star in, uh, Undefeated, about Sarah Palin, the withering attacks she and her family have uh, endured just for their public service. Do you think uh, that, you know, th- th- these kind of... Uh, Alec, these kind of uh, incidents uh, will, will be enough to keep her out of the presidential race, or do you think she's in? Well, I was, I'm was. i at the airport right now heading to this thing, and three people on my bus overheard what I was saying, and all three of them were involved in All three of them were involved in Palin bashing. Like, it was like a, a common... They just assumed that Palin is stupid and evil, and they were exchanging it back and forth. It's just, it's such an annoying thing that the mainstream press has done such a thorough job with McGinnis-like levels of accusations against her because they fear that she rep- represents middle America in such a great way. I, I, I know. It's, it's awful. It's terrible. That's why I encourage everybody to watch that movie, because it does a fabulous job of contrasting her real accomplishments with the attack she's undertaken. And this one is just the latest chapter. And unfortunately, that's the product of it, exactly what you encountered in your airport shuttle. So does, does that keep her out of this race, or do you think she toughs it out and, 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 and answers? There's redemption in this country. I think she's also one of the most popular people amongst those non-liberals who understand that, that, that she's withstood so much from so many people. So uh, I think she could come in. I think it would be a long shot, but I think that she, she's the type of person like the Green Bay Packers uh, in a town of 30,000, 50,000 people will show up when she shows up. She's that popular in the places where she's unpopular, and I do think that she could win. And wherever Sarah Palin is in is in, in unpopularity, whoever the Republican pick is a year from now, they'll be just as unpopular because the same media will have done the same treatment. I only have thirty seconds left, but I got to ask you about uh, the Anthony Weiner race. You played an important role in uh, in his uh, appropriate, uh, you know, traipsing off into uh, into the uh, you know uh, wherever Anthony Weiner is. Uh, but uh, the Democratic Civil War certainly is underway now. Do you think Obama's speech uh, has quelled that, or do you think there's still going to be a civil war? Yeah, I think at this point I, I couldn't even with a straight face say that it quelled it. Uh, he's pushing for a civil war on Labor Day when he uh, spoke standing next to Hoffa, who, who framed half of America as the enemy and that, we should go to, that they should go to war against it. And the same day that Biden was out there with Richard Trunk of the FLCIO. Hang on, Andrew, hang on if you can. We'll continue this on the side of the break. Hi, we're back on the Common Sense Club of the Scott Internet Show. Problem uh, with our uh, connection with our uh, Genesis Communication Network uh, hub. And uh, so apologize for the delay. Andrew Breitbart winging his way through security on the way to Orlando for tonight's uh, presidential debate. Make it through security, you got it, Andrew? Hey, I'm pre-checked, so I'm safe for you guys. Heck of a deal. Okay, so go ahead and finish. Uh, the narrative has been that, that obviously what happened in the New York 9 was going to spark it. Uh, you know, James Carville even says it's time for them to panic, start firing some people, a Democratic civil war all again. Then some narrative in, in the Democratic media complex that, uh, oh, all of that has been fixed by this uh, jobs plan and the speech and, uh, and Obama's leftward uh, sway. You think that's temporary? 
I don't think anything's temporary. I think that what you see is what you get, that the President of the United States was sold as a transcendent, ethereal, once-in-a-lifetime figure. Uh, it was built upon smoke and mirrors in Hollywood and Oprah Winfrey and uh, columns. And the second he landed, we realized, and I remember it vividly, if the media were the me a real media, they would remember the great symbol was when his teleprompter crashed in front of him, when we realized that he didn't have the glib abilities to speak and to communicate with the American people the way that President Clinton did, which also included a little dwarf by the name of Dick Morris kicking him in the shin saying, you are veering seriously from the American right of center tradition, and he told him to triangulate. And uh, uh, this guy does not have the ability to communicate with the American people. It's self-evident. And he knows, and he is the proxy of Richard Trunk of the AFL-CIO and Jimmy Hoff of the Teamsters, and he is sowing civil war in this country. So whatever they're talking about on the mainstream media is a diversion from the reality that this is a disaster of a president who is sowing civil war in this country, and uh, there is no equal justice under the law, under Justice Holder. The unions have gotten away with racism, violence, and even in Washington state, hostage-taking without any repercussions. These are the foot soldiers in Obama's civil war against a center-right nation. So do you, you buy the, uh, the, the fact that it is that big of a disaster, there'll be enough Democrats uh, in this civil war that say, hey, step aside, uh, we, we want another nominee, and, uh, and uh, the Chicago way says, here's my price for stepping aside. Do you think they're, you think they're the primary challenge, or do they, they go along to get along? Well, they understand uh, that as the, the left has tried to sow a civil war based upon race between the t a non-existent, uh, you know, uh, tension between uh, the black community which votes for Democrats and the Tea Party, it's been utterly proved false. They've tried desperately to do it. But if there were ever somebody uh, to go against Barack Obama, the black community uh, would go into hyperdrive accusing uh, that candidate, unless it were a black candidate, of being racist and trying to take away the first black president's you know, presidency. So they're in a damned if they do, damned if they don't situation. Uh, because there's never been any love lost between the Clintons. Uh, you know, this was supposed to be Hillary Clinton's presidency, and uh, I think that they're enjoying that he's flailing the way that he is, that he is because in the process, both Clintons are redeeming themselves with the American people as time goes by, and we forget what their presidency wrought. So this is rumor out there that he has a price to step aside, which would prevent, uh, you know, a primary challenge with some of the... Uh, shenanigans you're talking about, the accusations of racism and anything else. And that sounds like the Chicago way. Everything has its price in Chicago, right? Could you see him Every, saying, hey. Everyone, everyone has a price. And if it ever gets to that point, but uh, he, he will play his cards properly. Uh, and, you know, I, first of all, I think that he's probably been made wealthy beyond his wildest imagination uh, because community organizing apparently pays. Uh, but uh, everyone has a price, and I think that the Democratic Party is in full panic mode. It's not right. because they're expecting the, the, you know, even if the economy starts an uptick, which I doubt that it will because there's so much, you know, uh, the American people don't know what to do. There's, there's no. If you're a business as I am, it's very difficult to hire in this environment because he doesn't know what he's doing, or if he does know what he's doing, he's trying to drive us into the ground. So, I think that, uh, you know, that that the Clintons right now are chomping at the bit right now that this is the best thing that ever happened to them, and the panic mode is exactly what they want. That's why right. James Carville felt so comfortable to say that on TV. Only 30 seconds left. What will tomorrow's headline be on tonight's uh, GOP presidential debate? Uh, Breitbart takes down McGinnis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm one of these dopey guys that doesn't like to go on and prognosticate or talk about politics uh, as, you know, as much as the other people on Fox and MSNBC. I'm watching this thing just like every other American, trying to see which person's the best up there because the person's going to have to have 10 thousand times the firepower in taking on Barack Obama that, that John McCain did. So I'm looking for a fighter, I'm looking for somebody to come out swinging, and that's not to be coming out swinging against their fellow Republican over uh, some, you know, 
EBT virus or whatever the hell that thing is. I'm looking for somebody to be able to best articulate how he or she is going to take down 